All right, so I guess we've all heard of an atmospheric river by now. Yeah, lots of rain and snow in the eastern Sierra. The first in a week long series of storms battering the state of California as well as the eastern Sierra over the last few days. Lots of snow, lots of rain and unfortunately lots of rain up on well lots of snow. Now snow levels were high on Sunday. Rain fell in the town of Mammoth Lakes and yeah at Mammoth Mountain. A sound and light show, show thunder and lightning either frightened or amused people Sunday morning. I talked to a few that happened to go it went both ways with them. Also the lightning, the rain, Mammoth Mountain stopped running lifts about 11 o'clock on Sunday. Mammoth Mountain crews were busy digging out this morning and several lifts were able to run today. A gondola giving those powder hounds plenty to uh, howl about. There were dozens of spin outs, fender benders and accidents throughout the eastern Sierra over the weekend. The Inyo County Sheriff's Department reported at least 10 single vehicle accidents, rollovers between Big Pine and south of Independence on Sunday morning, while the Mammoth Lakes Police Department, Mono County Sheriff's Department and California Highway Patrol personnel kept busy with scores of people needing help with the storm. Now, US 395 was closed briefly twice on Sunday, once just before 1 p.m. between Mammoth and June Lake for flooding, and then again about 8.30 last night between Levining and the Nevada State Line again also for flooding. Now local officials had warned of flooding possibilities before the storm began and the higher snow levels on Sunday had mammoth residents and business owners shoveling and makeshift canals and using town supplied sandbags to keep their property safe. Now the town of Mammoth Lakes issued a press release on Sunday talking about that flood watch which is in effect through today noting the significant atmospheric river is bringing intense torrential rainfall to Mammoth Lakes. Residents and visitors advised to stay away from creeks, streams and flood prone areas and again do not attempt to drive through moving water. Stay off frozen lakes and ponds and also officials noting travel should be limited to emergencies only. Now the town is posting updated information on the well public information line at phone number 760-965-3612. Also the town e-news and town of mammothlakes.ca.gov head to that website and in the event of any emergency you can call 911 for assistance. Now sandbags are still available for residential property use from the town yard which is at 299 Commerce Drive. The town of Mammoth Lakes asks only that people take what they need and be respectful for others. Now to report areas of flooding, you can call 760-965-3681 and again in an emergency call 911. Town officials also urging people to stock up on water, food, first aid supplies, clothing and bedding, tools and emergency supplies, along with special items for medical conditions. You might also want to consider an alternative way to heat your home. And if you have to drive, obviously carry chains, make sure your gas tank is full, bring a charged cell phone, emergency food, water and blankets or sleeping bags and a shovel. Again, awesome advice from the town of Mammoth Lakes. And Inyo County Emergency Services and the Inyo County Sheriff's Department recommending residents of avalanche prone areas temporarily evacuate or be prepared to shelter in place for several days. This includes residents in the north and south fork of the Bishop Creek drainage and residents in the Big Pine Creek glacier drainage above Cone Road. They would also like to advise residents below the Lone Pine Creek burn area to be prepared to leave on short notice. And you can report flooding in Inyo County. Contact Inyo County Sheriff's Department 760-878-0383. And always remember, if you see water crossing a roadway, turn around, don't drown. Now, during emergency events such as severe storms and flooding, emergency workers may be responding to incidents all over the 10,000 square miles that make up Inyo County. Press release notes it's important that all residents and businesses take steps to be prepared as well as being self-sufficient in the event of an emergency. You can see the full press releases from our local officials on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, getting information from a press release that on December 27th, tribal members of the Napolese and Williams families 
filed a petition for habeas corpus in the U.S. District Court's Court Eastern Division, Fresno Division, against Bishop Paiute Tribal Council and Tribal Court Judge Phil Kokenmeister. Now, the petition cites unlawful convictions and the detaining of the family, the petitioners, for crimes, including trespass. It further cites the ejecting and restraining of the petitioners from their family land without due process or equal protection of law pursuant to the Indian Civil Rights Act. Now, the press release notes that in 2013, the Bishop Paiute Tribe's General Council voted down a measure to expand its casino. Now, despite that vote, the Tribal Council went forward with casino expansion plans and took steps to physically take petitioners' land for the project. Press release notes tribal police and employees were deployed on the family's land and destroyed fencing and property. Now, the petition to the U.S. District Court requests that the court discharge the TPOs, vacate the trespass citation, restrict the tribal council and Judge Kokenmeister from interfering with the family's use and occupation of the land and prohibit the Bishop Paiute Tribal Council from using the Annapolis Williams land for development, including casino expansion. Now, the families are represented by Andrea Seilstad, University of Dayton School of Law, Dayton, Ohio, as well as Jack Duran, Duran Law Office of Roseville, California. You can see that full press release posted on our website, sierrawave.net. We'll be back with more news.